guys. Happy Halloween. Well, it's not Halloween unless I'm telling a creepy story. And these are true. So, I'm going to get a little personal with some family dynamics. My husband's mother passed away back in when we lived in New York. And my brother-in-law and my father-in-law lived together for the rest of uh, my brother-in-law's life. Now, they moved down to Florida. And unfortunately, my husband and my brother-in-law did not get along. Uh, my brother-in-law wasn't the nicest person in the world. And that story can be backed up uh, by everybody that's ever met my brother-in-law. Wasn't exactly the nicest person. And while my brother-in-law and my father-in-law were living together, my husband sort of stayed away from the two of them. Now, my father-in-law was, was fine. He was a very nice person. My father, my husband would talk to him every once in a while, but I did not want to bring my children around my brother-in-law. So we really never visited him much in Florida, maybe once or twice in the 15 years that they lived down there. And we did a drive-by. Like, we drove up to the house, picked up my father-in-law, and scooted away. Uh, most of the time, my, we could have gone in. My brother-in-law made himself gone by the time we got there. Well, <laughs> my brother-in-law passed away. And uh, let me, there was not much tears shed. And I will just say that we told people that my brother-in-law passed away at the time and then prefaced it or or posted it you know like it was like my brother-in-law is dead we're fine don't worry about it <laughs> like we didn't want any sympathy or for anybody to say to my husband you know oh i'm sorry you lost your brother there was no love there so after my brother-in-law passed away uh we immediately of course uh got in contact with my father-in-law and we went down there to uh, see what my father-in-law would need, um, you know, him being alone in the house. And when we got there, the house was in really bad condition. And I mean terrible, awful condition. Um, there was mold growing. My brother-in-law smoked in the house. It was not, it did not smell very good. Um, anything that my father-in-law owned was basically ruined because the house had so much mold in it, which is not unheard of in Florida, but you take care of these things, and my brother-in-law did not. So basically the house was trashed, and when we went down there, we immediately sought help for my father-in-law as far as getting him out of that house ASAP. It was unhealthy. We have a friend who happened to be a social worker at the time, and we called her, and she said the fastest way to get services for your father-in-law and to, you know, get things, get him out of that house was to call protective, adult protective services, which we did. And they walked into the house, they turned around, walked out of the house, asked my father-in-law to step out of the house, and then informed him he would not be returning for any reason into the house. And they immediately took him into custody, knowing that we were going to be there for my father-in-law. My father-in-law was moved within 24 hours to a beautiful, really nice adult um, um, assisted living facility. And what was sad is my father-in-law had the money to do it, and could have done it at any time and really needed the services. And the apartment that we moved him into, we bought him everything he needs. He didn't take a thing from the from the house, nothing. Um, we bought him everything from new clothes, new shoes. New, he walked out of that house without even a toothbrush and we provided him with everything. Down to the TV and you name it. He got set up in the assisted living was like apartments and soup to nuts. He was very happy there. He was very excited to be there. Now that left the house. What do we do with this shambles of a house? And all my mother-in-law's photographs, my things that my 
husband grew up with just from his old house that my father-in-law took to the new house from uh, New York to uh, Florida were in that house, every single thing. So we had to go into the house and salvage whatever we could. And even though I was wearing a mask, I, I couldn't allow my husband to go in because it was unhealthy and not safe for my husband being that he had prior illnesses. He has, you know, heart problems and kidney problems. He's always had that. So I was the only person with the key. My husband did not come into the house at all. My father-in-law was tucked away in his new place, happy he did not return into the house. Nobody else had the key. I went and I started going through drawers and everything that was there and all my brother-in-law's stuff were basically scattered like a mess all over the place. And I had a, only a couple of days to clean out that house. And we're talking within a week of my my brother-in-law passing away. We got my father-in-law out of there, situated, we shopped, we did everything within a week. And we ended up actually selling the house. And they said, the people who bought the house said we could leave everything in there. We, we sold the house basically to one of those companies that buy any house and they give you bottom dollar but we didn't care one way or another it was like it wasn't going to be our problem anymore and they said you can go in you know we closed on the deal within 24 hours they said you can go in take whatever you want don't bother to clean it because they were going to just come in and trash it and pull the walls down and everything they were going to completely you know fix the problems that were there and we, um, I had like two days, it was like one night. And so it was the day, the night and the next day to go in pack in boxes, whatever was salvageable that I could actually clean the mold off of and get it shipped back to Las Vegas or clean it and give it to my father-in-law. We ended up shipping everything and that's for another story. So... I went into the house and everything was just quiet the first day and I was going through old pictures and it was just dust everywhere and it really looked like they never picked up anything like any rag to dust anything off. I packed up some things that I was able to bleach and we're talking about like there was a crystal we had once given my mother-in-law, just things like that were, that were non-porous. And then I had the photos and I knew I wasn't going to be able to bring the photos back into my own home, but I would be able to have copies made of them and maybe I could salvage some of those. So we did take them, but before I took them, I didn't want to take so much like because the more I took the more mold I knew I was getting touching and stuff so I just quickly as I was packing things up um, looked at them and then I didn't bother cleaning so I would look at something and throw it look at it toss it look at it toss it I had to be really super quick especially I was doing this alone for the whole entire place I didn't know what to like where do I put things and because everything was just disgusting. I cleaned a table and I bleached the table. There is nothing on this table. And I put the box that I was, that was a clean box on this table. And I was putting the stuff that we were taking out of the home into this box. And then I cleaned um, an area in the kitchen and I would move the box into the kitchen and then get another box, which I left outside until I filled. Um, so I had the boxes all outside. The less exposure, the better. The end of the day, um, we would take the box out. It came to the photos and I would look at it, toss, look, toss, keep, look, toss, keep. And I came to some photos of my brother-in-law. And I was mortified at the condition he allowed my father-in-law to live in and the fact that they did not tell us 
that there was a problem going on. So at this point, not only was I estranged from him, I was furious that this would have been allowed. Like never in a billion trillion years would my mother-in-law have ever lived like this. My mother-in-law was an awesome woman. My father-in-law was pretty nice too, but he just was stuck with my brother-in-law. And I got to these pictures of my brother-in-law and I was like, you know, I'm wiping you off the planet. I don't want my kids didn't, my, my youngest daughter didn't even know his name. Um, when we said Uncle Jeffrey passed away to her, she repeated it to one of her sisters and called him Jerry, Uncle Jerry. And she didn't even know his name. And that's the, and she wouldn't have been able to pick him out of a lineup or if he ran, she ran into him in the street, she would have had no idea that that would have been the uncle. Um, um, I think it was my middle child was like, when she found out, she's like, your daddy's not an only child? Like, we never talked about it. We didn't look down about the guy. We didn't, but my kids really didn't put it together that my husband had a sibling it was only my husband and his brother. And we're just sad because they got along when they were really young. I was not taking the pictures back. My husband did not want them. I was not taking them back. So I was getting sort of a sick satisfaction of looking at his pictures and tearing them and tossing them. And I got to this one picture and I looked at it and I said, you're gone. And I ripped it in half, and I remember throwing one half in one direction and the other half in the other direction. I know it's immature, but it just was giving me some sort of satisfaction that you are gone and you are never going to affect anybody ever again. At the end of the day, we packed up the plate, you know, we packed up, and I still had a lot of work to do the next day, and we took whatever we could out of the apartment. We put it in... Um, immediately into boxes that we brought to the post office and we were having it shipped to my house and with instruction do not open these boxes in my house because I was had every full intention of opening them outside hosing everything down bleaching everything and not allowing the pictures into my home because you can transfer mold now remember no body went into that house that night. Nobody cared that much. It was not like my father-in-law had friends, but nobody that was going to mourn the death of my brother-in-law. They just didn't, he didn't have that type of relationship with anyone because he couldn't cultivate relationships because of my brother-in-law. I walked in the next day. I turned the key. I walked into the room and there sitting on the table was the photograph that I had torn in half the day before, on the table, put back together, the two pieces, put back together, torn of course, but resting side by side on a completely empty table. I screamed. I went, oh no, 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 no. And ran out of the house. We shut the door and nobody ever went from my family went back into that house again. I called my husband on the phone. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. I'm leaving. I don't care what it is. And we just left it all behind. That was probably the scariest thing I've ever experienced because I am 110% sure one half went in one direction. The other half went in the other direction. And I I think I did something even more in uh, um, more uh, immature. I think I spit towards his bed. Fast forwarded a couple of years. One day I woke up and I'm like, "Why is your father living in Florida, in a uh, an apartment in Florida?" He, my father-in-law was getting older. Every time he it was a problem, he was calling us. Why is he there? There's nobody there, and he has all his grandchildren here, and his family is here, and he can come for holidays and I said to my father my husband could we move your father-in-law to Vegas and my father was like yeah you know nobody even thought of it like we didn't even it didn't even pass our mind because we would have done this originally just take him to Las Vegas so 
we called my father-in-law up and we were like, you know, I know you like where you are. He had made friends. Um, he liked where he was. But we said to him, would you like to come to Las Vegas? And my father-in-law said, yeah, definitely. So within a, a day, my, with my, my daughter had assisted us and we found a really nice assisted living facility that immediately accepted him. Um, it, it, it was no problem. And it was even nicer than the one in Florida. So he moved into a place that was even nicer. And we even told him we're not taking anything from Florida. When you get to Las Vegas, we will buy you again, everything brand new. So don't even worry about it. We flew down to Florida. We met him, uh, picked him up and took him to Las Vegas. It was that quick. It was really almost immediately because in, in these homes, it's, it's month to month. So all we had to do was pick him up. There was no, you know, sorry, he's not going to be here next month because in assisted living, people die and they're kind of used to people just leaving quickly. The month was paid up. So, I mean, within a day or two, he was literally here in Vegas and we bought him everything. But the one thing that he insisted on taking from Florida was my brother-in-law's ashes. We moved the ashes into his assisted living facility, stuck them in the closet. And in fact, my youngest daughter absolutely refused to go into his apartment here in Vegas because her uncle was in the closet. She said she got a really bad feeling. So my father-in-law lived happily in Vegas for several years and then he unfortunately passed away. He was in his 90s this time and he passed away and that left us with a dilemma. What do we do with Jeffrey's ashes? Now my idea was a little um, funny. I found a cookie jar with a garden gnome or garden troll with his butt sticking up to the sky mooning. And in the cookie jar, I was going to put his ashes and the ashes out in the yard. Now, are you wondering why didn't you just go spread the ashes? Well, we are respectable. And even though I would have loved to have just thrown them in the garbage, I had a mother-in-law who I know would not have wanted that. And I'm, I, I loved my mother-in-law so much. She was a second mother to me. She was such a good person. I know I could never do that to her. So I would someday have to face her in heaven and, and explain myself why I did that. She could deal with me tearing up his pictures, I don't think she would have been happy that I did not at least take her Jeffrey's ashes to where she was buried and put them with her. And I get that. I'm a mom. I get it. So my middle daughter, being the sweetheart that she is, and, and she, my middle child has the heart of gold. My other two didn't care what I did with the ashes. Um, my middle one is the sensitive one, the sweet one. And she was like, you are not putting uh, Jeffrey in the garden in a troll's behind. And my daughter stuck him in the garage. He's in a closet in the garage. He's still there because we haven't gone back to New York since. And we have my father-in-law's ashes here too behind my bar, which was fine. It was a good place for him. Um, he wasn't an alcoholic or anything like that, but he did like his whiskey. It was like, like he didn't get drunk every night or anything like that, but he just liked the drink. So for him to be behind the bar is like funny and he's in the house and we're happy to have him in here. And Jeffrey's out in the garage and that's the closest to in my house he's going to get. So how does this have to do with what happened to my husband? Well, I I got curious too, and I know like two people had sent me emails asking me, and I you know that if you if you were following my saga, my husband was very sick last month, the month before, he was very very sick. In fact, he was so sick he died twice, and 
you don't want to ask somebody what you see, especially if you don't know them so well. Well, I know my husband. I The first thing I said when I walked into the room the first time I saw him after he had these two heart episodes was what you see. What was it like when you died? And because, of course, I'm not going to hesitate. And he said, I didn't see anything. He's like, why didn't I see anything? And I'm like, because you don't remember. And he's like, well, that makes sense. And we left it at that. He didn't have a memory of anything that happened during the brief minutes that his heart had stopped. Well, that wasn't entirely true. And it took my husband a little while to process it because he didn't want to tell me what he had saw. Well, apparently, my husband met his brother, which I could say is a little shocking. He did not speak to his brother, but his brother was watching over him. And there was a good outcome with my husband. My husband did not die. God knows he's doing great today compared to what he was... He was going to go to a concert tonight until I put my foot down and said, you don't have your booster shot, you're not going anywhere. In talking with my husband and getting exactly what did you see, what experience, he said it was, he just saw his brother and his brother was just standing there watching him as if his brother was looking over him. And we kind of think that um, his brother may have had sort of like a change of mind or a regret in life. And that was relationships with people. And he definitely would have benefited from having a relationship with his brother. His, my husband was very good to him and would have continued to be very good to him. So we are now have a little bit of a different mindset. We're thinking of it that um, Jeffrey's really looking over us. And it, he said it felt like it was a protective feeling. It wasn't like, I've come to attack you type of thing and I'm going to get you. It was more like, now I'm looking over you. And so I've sort of had a change of heart about my brother-in-law. I am a very forgiving person. I no longer have as much disdain for him. I have anger for him that I've sort of forgiven. And I try to remember back on the days where we did have a relationship with him and it wasn't as bad as it was at the end. So with that, that is my story. What did my husband see when he died? And I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.